homeschooling videos on VHS tapes that you want to watch but aren't able to? Let us help. Come to Garden City New York Media and we can convert your old home movies to DVD or flash drive. It's easy to do and you'll be able to take a trip down memory lane in no time. Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the GC360 podcast filmed right here in the Garden City New York Media Studios, right here in downtown Garden City, New York. I'm your host, Katherine O'Connell. Tonight, we are bringing you a very special town hall episode of the podcast, where you, our viewers, have a chance to learn more about the candidates running for the 2024 position of the Garden City's Board of Trustees. The role of a board of trustee member is to establish policies for the management of the affairs of the incorporated village of Garden City. The board and trustees take all measures to do all acts of good government on behalf of the village, its management and business, including protecting the incorporated village's property, the safety, health, comfort, and general welfare of its inhabitants, and the preservation of peace and good order in the community. Today in studio, we have the four candidates running for trustee. Welcome Judy Courtney, Jessica Tai, Bruce Torino, and Vinnie Muldoon. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you are enjoying tonight's GC360 Facebook Live. Your opinions matter to us. We wanna hear from you. Make sure you comment your questions and opinions about tonight's town hall in the chat below. So we're gonna start by learning a little bit about each of the candidates and tell us a little bit about your background. You'll have two minutes to answer each. So let's start with you, Bruce. Kat, thank you very much for inviting me here. It's a pleasure to be here with this facility in Garden City. It is spectacular. I am a trial attorney and have been so for 41 years. I was also a village trustee between 1997 and 2001. As a village trustee, we are, are established to run the village, to provide guidance so that the employees have the capacity, the equipment, and the services needed to provide all the municipal services. Back in 97, I was a recreation commissioner for two years where one of my projects was to establish the park that you see now at St. Paul's for kids. I said to myself, when the big kids come to play, where do the little kids go? So I designed it and it became, you know, what you see now. Also, taking the train into New York City, I looked at the recharge basins for Nassau County. And I said, two have water, two don't. I said, okay. So we, from the village, at my request, now have one of those recharge basins by the high school. I was also on the zoning board and on the legal committee. So I have a wealth of experience, and here it is, 20 years later, I was voted again as a village trustee. I was the, on the legal committee and on the fire commissioner. One of my hallmarks was serving on the mayor's fire safety committee. As a former firefighter and EMT, I knew all the issues that they raised and wanted to put into place those facilities and equipment that makes this village safe. So I am pleased that to be able to run again for trustee, in this case, it would be my reelection. And I look forward to continuing my service to the village as a volunteer. Thanks, Kat. Thank you, that was great, Bruce. Okay, Jessica. Thank you, thank you for having us. It's really a great place to be in. So Bruce is like the encyclopedia of Garden City. He has contributed so much to the beautiful village. So my experience is a little bit different. So I was born and raised in China, and I came here to this country when I was 23, just by myself with my suitcase, and to get my <laughs> master's in uh, teaching English as a second language. And then I met my husband, 
and we've been married for 20 years. We have two children, eight and 10. A few years ago, we moved to Garden City. It's really a very special place. So we were driving uh, through town, and then I just had a very deep connection with the village. The houses are stately, it's just so beautiful, and we had a community feel. So after that, we decided to move here. And when we first moved in, the neighbors welcomed us with wine, with uh, chocolate and handwritten cards. So we felt uh, the sense of belonging right away. And my kids have been very happy in the schools. I'm just really honored and grateful that I have this opportunity to give back to this beautiful place. And we have uh, our future invested in this place. We want to make it nice and clean and uh, good for every resident. Thank you so yeah, much, Jessica. Thank you. I love that. All right, Judy. Thanks, Kat. And as you've heard already, and you'll hear more of, we are a very diverse group, and our experiences really speak to that. So a little bit about me. I actually was born and raised in the village. Um, I'm one of those lifers of which there are many in the village, and I think that's a real reflection of the type of community it is. As a matter of fact, my mother was born and raised here, and my grandfather built many of the homes around town. So I have a real sense of the community and the roots and where, where things have come from and how they've progressed. I also chose to raise my family here. My daughter has just settled here, and I've had my first granddaughter, so I'm very excited, and they live right nearby as well. In terms of the village and the work that I've done, I've really been involved in many different ways. Unlike Bruce, I've not been a trustee, but I've been involved in many civic organizations. I've been on the Recreation Commission. I've been on several committees, such as the um, 150th Anniversary Committee. I have organized many civic events, such as the Family Fall Festival that we had last fall with about 500 people. I've been on the Mobility Commission and many, many others. The reason is that mainly because A, I love local government, and B, I love my community. I have a really strong philosophy that says, if you don't like something, you have to do something about it. You can't complain without helping to make it better. And I like to think the work that I have done has really spoken to that philosophy. And that's what I'll continue to do as a trustee. Thanks, Thank you Kat. So much. Thank you so much, that was great. Vinny, what about you? Hi, Kat, thanks for having me. Uh, beautiful studio here. and. Uh, I'm glad to be here with uh, my three running mates for the uh, Board of Trustees in Garden City. Uh, it's an amazing town and we're all blessed to live here and also to live in this amazing country called the United States. Uh, by now, most people pick up on the fact that I have an accent and uh, was not born in this country. Uh, born in Ireland, uh, youngest of 10 on a farm uh, and uh, was the luckiest guy in the world to immigrate here right out of high school. Uh, I'd play some ball in Boston uh, where I met my uh, lovely wife, Dina, and uh, five kids later, um, she was from New York, moved down to uh, Garden City. Back then, I actually moved to uh, Franklin Square, um, right next door, and just a uh, beautiful town that I just by accident started to work here. I'm in the construction world, and uh, we uh, raised our family here, and we built a construction company from the ground up. It'll be 30 years old this year, and um, it's an amazing organization, and we work for a lot of the residents in town. So I'm very familiar with Garden City. Uh, we pretty much uh, work on a lot of streets over the last 30 years and got to know all the residents. Um, it's just an amazing, amazing, beautiful village, and the reason I'm running for trustee is to give back. This town has been extremely good to me and my family. The residents are amazing people. Uh, the history, I'm a history buff, and this town has amazing history with A.T. Stewart, who was also born in Ireland and um, just blessed to, uh, to live here. And now it's time for me to use my strengths as a leader who knows the community, loves to do charity work, uh, and is, a, is a, just a good leader by nature. It's my strength to bring people together, get them to work together, and make some great changes in this town to make it better for everybody that lives here. So. I'm privileged to uh, to be able to run for this position, and uh, please God, uh, people come out and vote on March 19th, and uh, we'll have a great day and uh, make this village even better than it already is. So thank you for having us. Thank you so much. That was that was excellent. Do you sometimes wish for more time with the people you love? When loved ones pass away, we always say to ourselves, "If I could just hear their voice and see their face one more time." Well, now you can. Here at Garden City New York Media, we offer a service so you can cherish your memories. 
We can capture loved ones on camera as they share memories about their life. When the session is over, it can be put onto a DVD or saved in a Dropbox folder so it can be enjoyed for many generations. Give us a call today to get started. I hope you are enjoying tonight's GC360 Facebook Live. Your opinions matter to us. We want to hear from you. Make sure you comment your questions and opinions about tonight's town hall in the chat below. Okay, so the next question that you guys have, you will have three minutes to answer each. So it's, what was your sole reason for running for the board of trustee position? And what makes you a strong choice for the role? And we're going to go in the same order. So Bruce, go ahead. <laughs> well, in my case, it's deja vu all over again. The village runs because volunteers want it to run. They want to contribute their energies, their abilities, and their passion to make certain that the village continues. As a trustee, I'm only a custodian for the future. If I don't take care of the village now, where will it be in the future? Vinny's family, Judy's family, Jessica's family. I'm doing it for them. I'm already here. I did it for four years and I figured I'd pass the baton to others. But then sometimes things happen that they call you back. And here I am, willing to go forward to make certain that those things that are needed to make the village prosper, to make it as livable as possible, that's my aim and goal. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. That was great. Okay, Jessica. All right, my turn. Your turn again. Yes. Uh, so I'm a working mom. So I have two little ones, and they're eight and ten, and it's a lot of work. They go to school. After school, it's activities. So I'm busy, and I also work full time. I teach in Brooklyn. So it's a lot going on. I wasn't really paying attention to what was happening in town. You know, as a busy parent, you are just like so involved in your own family's life. And then I realized that things were happening. So I started going to board meetings. So when I attended the board meetings, it was a, quite an experience. So it was eye opening. So there were two things that um, really struck me. So one was as I walked into the room, I noticed on the board and in the audience, I didn't see a lot of people in my age group. So I guess people are busy. So even though they have so much um, invested in the village, people just don't have the time to go to the board meetings. So I would really like to have more young people involved because I feel young people, the younger families, the busy families, and they should have a representation on the board so they know what's happening in town and they can have a voice and they can be represented, their voice can be heard and their concerns can be addressed. So I'm really hoping by me getting involved, we can get more younger families and busy parents involved in the village. Um, another thing I noticed was, I was hoping there could be more discussion within the board. So when I went, I feel there was not a lot of discussions going on at the board meetings. And when residents ask some questions, and I feel there should have been more um, attentiveness to their questions and more passion. So that's what I'm really hoping to bring to the board, just to be more caring, like what can we do for you? What are your concerns? What are your needs? I'm here to listen, let's work on it, work together. Like nothing is ridiculous. We're here to help you. So that's what I feel strongly about. So really work with everyone, listen to everyone, have everything discussed before decisions are made. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Judy. Thanks, Kat. And I'll answer the question in a slightly different way, but you'll hear a theme, I think, from all of us. So um, as many may or may not know, the, the village of Garden City was founded upon a very interesting and unique principle. And from a small government perspective, we have always demonstrated or believed in the fact that we are not a political community, right? There would never a race against uh, Republicans versus Democrats. We always had collaboration, teamwork, and partnership amongst any trustees wherever they came from. 
Unfortunately, that's changed dramatically over the last few years, which is of great concern to me. So we now have trustees on the board who won't go to re certain residents' meetings. We have trustees on the board who won't answer requests for information. We have trustees on the board who won't allow village employees to come to certain resident meetings. And to me, that is not what a trustee is. A trustee is elected for the entire village to serve everyone, no matter which, quote, side you're on. So the real driving factor for me is that I really believe we have gotten away from the founding principle of a really unique and special community, and that concerns me. And it concerns me not only because it doesn't feel good and we all like to be kind of liked by each other, it really concerns me because it ends up having decisions made that are wrong. If you only listen to one small group of people, if you only listen to those who agree with you, you're going to wind up making bad decisions for the entire community. And again, I feel that road we are going down right now is going to hurt us in the long run and have a lot of detrimental effects to the village. I think it's very important to get back to much more collaboration and ability to listen and argue with people in a positive way, incorporate different viewpoints, and then move forward together. We are really lucky to live in a great village like this, and I think people have lost sight of that a little bit. We should be thanking our blessings every day and working together to make our village even better. So that's really the most important thing to me. That's a good point. Thank you so much. All right, Vinny. Um, so I'm just going to follow up on, on basically what the other three candidates have talked about, about teamwork, about leadership, about caring, about listening to the residents, and, and doing this because you're passionate about, about how you feel. The reason I'm doing this, because I love this village, I want to make it better, and I'm passionate about it. I'm a passionate guy, everybody that knows me, I'm all in all the time and everything I do. Uh, but it's a team effort, right? So I'm the leader of my team, I have an organization I run, I'm only as good as the weakest link. And my job is to find the weakest link and make it make it better and make that person feel like they're the most special part of the team, right? It doesn't matter whether your person sweeping the floor or the person is doing amazing molding work in our business. Everybody should get the credit they deserve and feel like they're a big part of, of the town, what's going on. That's what a board of trustees should be like. Everybody working together in harmony. We're all different. We're, we're four very different people. But we have one goal in common here, and that's to make the village better, get people to work together, bring that camaraderie and, and love back to the village and, and, and have, a, have fun, you know, work together, but work hard. If you want to be a trustee, to me, you got to get your hands dirty. You got to go out and walk around the village and help out. And whether it's sweeping, cleaning or making the big decisions like working with the casino issue on, on, in uh, Uniondale, St. Paul's and other things that there are the big issues but you can't do the big issues and work together if you don't do the small things first. So I'm all about bringing people together, showing leadership, making people make decisions, and then commit to do the job right the first time. And again, bring the community back together, you know, and get the job done. And that's what I'm here for. I love this village. I love this group of people. And whoever we're going to work with, if we're lucky enough to get elected on the board, we're all in to work with whoever is on that board and our mayor to make things better for the village. Team 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 thank you absolutely i love that all right thank you guys so much for that do you have old family videos on vhs tapes that you want to watch but aren't able to let us help come to garden city new york media and we can convert your old home movies to dvd or flash drive it's easy to do and you'll be able to take a trip down memory lane in no time I hope you are enjoying tonight's GC360 Facebook Live. Your opinions matter to us. We want to hear from you. Make sure you comment your questions and opinions about tonight's town hall in the chat below. Um, okay, so for the next round, uh, you guys are also going to have three minutes as well. So how would you use your professional background to bring fresh ideas and influence to the Board of Trustees and the incorporated village of Garden City? All right, Bruce. Bingo, here I am again. <laughs> I'm a trial attorney, but I've tried a great variety of cases. And one of the skill sets that I have is to look at a case from every angle and to make certain that you do the necessary research 
that the outcome is the preferred one. Litigation is not necessarily going to court and trial. Litigation has to do with assembling information, digesting that information, talking to other people who know as much, if not more, than you do, and distilling a decision. In the case of the casino, I was the only, in fact, I'm the only uh, trustee in the village who actually litigated a case against the Town of Hempstead Zoning Board in 1999. So I have the expertise. I walk the walk, I talk the talk, and the whole purpose here is to say to the rest of my team here, and these are a team, there's no I in team. This is such a great group of individuals running for trustee that if I have any knowledge that I can tell them about how the village law runs or any of the other issues, I give it to them. If they have any knowledge as to what they think they want to do, I'll support them. The whole idea here is to make the village run better. I only work half a day, six in the morning to six at night. And there's a very old phrase, if the captain is not rowing, nobody's rowing. And as Vinny has said, we will do it by example. So I think that my expertise and prior experience on the board, that's what I think I bring to the ticket. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. All right, Jessica. So I have been an educator for over 20 years, and I have been teaching in my elementary school in Brooklyn for 18 years. I started there in 2006. So one thing as an educator teacher, I'm also on the leadership uh, team, uh, instructional leadership team at my school where we discuss uh, best teaching practices. What I find as an educator is that you have to work with everyone. You work with the administrators, you work with your fellow educators, teachers, staff, you work with the children, obviously, and you work with their parents. It's really you have to, sometimes you don't always agree, or you agree to disagree, but you have to know what your goal is. Everything we do while we are there is for the children, and it's to really help every child to reach their potentials. So that's why we are there. So sometimes we have differences, sometimes we don't always agree, but we collaborate and we have the common goal, which is for the best interest of the child. I think that really transfers over to what we do as trustees. We need to think about the best interest of Garden City. So it doesn't matter, again, we collaborate. It doesn't matter which group you're in, which party you run on when you were elected as a trustee, independent, whatever. So the common goal is what unites us, and we have to work with everyone to do the best for the village. And another thing as an educator, what I really noticed was that education doesn't stop at 2.30 or 3 o'clock when school ends. So the community really plays a very, very crucial role in a child's well-being, socially, um, academically, and emotionally. So I really want to see what are the needs of the families and what needs are being addressed by the schools and what needs are not being met and what needs can be accommodated by the village, by the community. Is it enrichment? Is it after school? Is it the basics, the fundamentals, the essentials, safe water, right? And traffic. When the kids are riding their bike to school, are they safe? Are cars running through stop signs? What can we do about that? There is a lot going on. And also there is a Sands Casino, of course, nearby. Um, is that gonna affect us in terms of traffic? Uh, will that have some increased crime? Will that um, you know, bring some gambling into our uh, picture that we have to think about? So there are these things, big and small, same pause. That's another um, thing that we're all talking about. For the last 30 years, you know, finally we are moving forward with it. So what can, uh, what are the needs for St. Paul's down the road, right? What are the real needs of the community? So I think there is a lot that we're going to address, but first of all, we work together and then we really want to support families and every resident, not just the young families, but every age group. What can we do 
to provide communal support to everyone. Thank you, that was great. Okay, Judy. Thank you, thank you. So a little bit about um, what I do. So I'm the Chief Human Resources Officer for a media sales organization in the city, and my whole career has been in human resources. And I think that role has really helped me personally, professionally, and would help me greatly in the role as trustee for a couple of reasons. There's the technical side, right? Recruiting, benefits. The village is a business, right? At the end of the day, there are very specific things that happen that make the business run, make the village run, such as how much do we pay people, such as how do we hire top talent, et cetera. I think very much on the technical side of what I do, I would bring great value to the village from that perspective. But there's another piece of what I do, especially as, as, the, um, as the chief human resources officer. A lot of what I do is really around coaching and working with leadership teams and employees to develop people in a way that gets the best and the best performance from everyone. A lot of my time is really spent with groups of people helping, helping them figure out how to work together. There's all sorts of, you know, imagined conversations, what works, what doesn't work, he did this, she did that. All of that happens every day, and all of that happens in the village, it happens with residents, it happens between the board. My strength has always been bringing those people together, being objective, facilitating those conversations in a way that makes everyone feel comfortable, able to be open and honest, and get things done collectively without walking out of the room feeling like I'm never going to talk to them again. And I think that that is a strength that A, I bring to this role, and B, that we need very much so right now, probably more than ever before. So I'm happy to help that way. That's amazing. Thank you, Judy. All right, Vinny. Thank you so much. I'm going to follow up a little bit on, on some of Judy's ideas there in regards to, again, going back to what I talked about earlier, leadership, getting people to work together. But in my world, I'm in the construction world. Okay, so we look at every aspect of construction from the smallest little jobs, which you know, just, you know, they're small, but they're really important. And then all the way to building magnificent homes and restoring beautiful old classic homes and everything in between. The key with any village or any construction project is being able to look at every detail from the tiniest little things that you really can't even see all the way to large projects. And you have to have the right people in place you have to have the right leadership in place, and you have to put people in a position to succeed in the village. You can want to do all the things in the world in this lovely village of ours, but if you don't have the right people in the leadership positions and then give them all the different people that they need to be successful, you're going to fail. So where I come in is looking at the entire infrastructure of this village as a whole, all the stuff that goes on in the village in regards to infrastructural investments, maintenance of the village, that's my forte. And I'm an attention to detail guy. I'm a, I'm a pain in the neck. Most of my employees will tell you that. Just because I want things done right, I want to do them once. And I don't want to have to spend extra money to do them a second time or go back later and say, well, why didn't we do that? I'm going to try and look at this overall village and find ways to improve the village as a whole, find where we're not, not taking money and, and the hard-earned money from the taxpayer and wasting it. I want to take that money and put it into the areas as simple as power washing the streets, painting, flowers, you know, and then go all the way to the big topics like the St. Paul's and other big projects that need to be resolved in this village. But it starts and finishes with leadership, bringing everybody together on the board to work together for the one common cause, and that's to make this village beautiful again and have people have this sense of community and happiness and uplift them and inspire them, you know, to all work together as a community versus right now we're a little splintered my goal is to bring that all, bring everybody back together again. And I'm looking forward to the challenge and uh, we'll all work together and we'll make it happen. We will, I'm confident. That sounds Thank good. Thank you. Do you sometimes wish for more time with the people you love? When loved ones pass away, we always say to ourselves, if I could just hear their voice and see their face one more time. Well, now you can. Here at Garden City New York Media, we offer a service so you can cherish your memories. We can capture your loved ones on camera as they share memories about their life. When the session is over, it can be put onto a DVD or saved in a Dropbox folder so it can be enjoyed for many generations. Give us a call today to get started. All right, everyone, last question. So you'll have two minutes to answer this one. What agendas, topics, or areas of interest would be most crucial for you to tackle? Starting again. 
direction, providing guidance, providing instruction, and putting the projects that the village needs to get done in a priority order that the Board of Trustees must provide the financial support, the emotional uh, sustenance to the employees, as well as prioritizing what we're going to do. Merely because we have big ticket items like St. Paul's or the casino, that should not be the core function and distract the board from making the village gorgeous. I mean, Vinny's going to be out there with a broom <laughs> and I'll be right behind them saying, let's go, let's go. So if the village employees feel that they are supported by the board of trustees that are given the tools and equipment necessary, that's what a board of trustees needs to do. Thank you. What agendas, topics, or areas of interest would be most crucial for you to tackle? Uh, yeah, my goal is to foster a really safe and clean and prosperous community for everyone. We want to have a community where uh, we're all united. So for me, I think, again, we want to work on small things and we want to work <clears throat> on big things. So I just want to echo what Bruce just mentioned. So small things we want to have, you know, you go to 7th Street, we want it to be clean. We want it to be vibrant, have nice stores, and we want it to be family friendly where children can um, go into restaurants and different uh, places where everyone enjoys. And at the same time, we want to also make sure our water mm -hmm. is safe. Uh, we want to make sure things are taken care of. And then it comes down to accountability. It comes down to uh, the budget. So we want to make sure we want to look at every single aspect where we can get the funding. Are there grants out there? So that's going to help the village as well. At the same time, big items. So St. Paul's Casino, those are the things that we want to listen to all the residents. We want to see what we can do. We want to bring people together. We want to see what everyone thinks and we'll go from there. Ultimately, eventually, it's the residents who make the final decision. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Judy. I would say, you know, mine is additive. Certainly, I, I would agree with everything Bruce and Jessica said, and I'm sure what Vinny says as well. But I would add to that one of the key pieces for me is to develop or restore a sense of community. I feel that we've been lucky in this town to have people who love living here and have pride in living here. And we've gotten a little bit away from that. We've lost some community events, more than the promenades, and we've lost other opportunities for residents to gather together. And I think that the way in which we build on community will then feed all the things we want to do. If we want to have a clean 7th Street, all of us as residents need to chip in and do that. But we need to have pride in our community. If we want to maintain and manage speeding and traffic issues, all of us as residents play a role in that. So how do we make sure that as a community, we are going in the same direction on these critical issues? So I think that's to me is the most important starting point, developing that in a variety of ways. Some of them are fun events, some of them are difficult decisions. But if we develop or reinvigorate this sense of community, I really believe we'll be able to solve the problems together if we remained a splintered community with too many people calling each other names and bickering back and forth, these issues will not get solved and we'll be in a circle for another two or three or five years to come. So that sense of community and redeveloping that is what's most important to me. That's very true, thank you. All right, last but not least, Vinny. Judy, I'm giving you the compliments you've been passing along. Um, you can't do anything unless you have the sense of community and the backing of the community behind you. Because it's about the residents and it's about the seniors who have spent their whole life here, who still pay as much taxes as I do and young families do that send their kids to, to uh, the high school. You know, respect them. Uh, listen to them when they come to you and say, we need this, we'd like to do this. Of all people, the seniors deserve that respect in this town. And at times, they don't get it. And that's unacceptable in any community. Our parents, our grandparents, there's a reason why we're here is because of them. So, so that's a big one in regards to that. To me, my, my, there's a lots of things I want to get done, but I would think the most important thing is to give the water department in our town the backing 
that they need and the finances they need to make sure that they get the water issue that we're having in this town resolved for once and for all and then create a maintenance plan because maintenance is everything in your home, in town, to make sure our water plants, our water towers, everything is being done to ensure that one day we don't need water filtration systems in our homes. We can remove them and we have great water like we should have, but just because of the history of industry in Nassau County, you know, we're dealing with that right now, unfortunately. But I'll tell you, they've hired an amazing uh, man to, uh, to run our water department, this gentleman called Stan, he's fantastic. So that's a big, a big addition. Uh, and so we're gonna support him in every which way. And then we're gonna start right downtown and we're gonna get our downtown to be the nicest, most beautiful, clean town in Long Island. That's my goal. And to do that rapidly so we can get back to the basics of just having this beautiful town that the community, the kids and everybody can come around and just enjoy our beautiful town. It's our, it's our signature. It's our baby, it's our history. Get that right, everything else will flow right after that. And we'll tackle the big issues and we'll resolve them by listening to the residents, making tough decisions and looking out for the dollar and making sure that every dollar that people are paying in this town and their taxes is getting spent properly. And again, one more time, we have the team here. We're gonna have a great team on the board with the mayor. We'll all work together to bring this town back and make it just an amazing place. It's an amazing place now, but we need to make changes and bring everybody back together again. And uh, we're the right four people to do it with the rest of the board. Come March 19th, come vote for us. That was a fantastic point. Thank you so much, Vinny. And thank you guys so much. That's all the questions that we have for you today. Uh, this wraps up our special town hall episode of the GC360 podcast. Thank you so much to the candidates, Judy Courtney, Jessica Tai, Bruce Torino, and Vinny Muldoon. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and thank you all for joining us today. If you would like to learn more about the Board of Trustee Voting and how you can participate, please visit www gardencityny.net. I'm Catherine O'Connell, and I'll see you all next time.